وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار <coughs> الحمد لله we praise Allah and we seek his assistance and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and from our bad deeds whoever Allah guides there is none that can lead him astray and whoever is led astray then there is no guide for him I bear witness to la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah and I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger O oh, you who believe fear Allah as he ought to be feared and don't die except as Muslims O oh, humanity fear your Lord who has created you from a single soul and created from it its mate and scattered from them to many men and women and fear Allah for whom you demand your mutual rights and don't cut off relations with the wombs that bore you indeed Allah is a raqib a watcher over you O oh, you who believe fear Allah and say that which is correct in order that he may accept from you <coughs> your deeds and forgive you of your sins and obey Allah and his messenger has achieved the greatest achievement amma ba'du certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah and the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the most evil of affairs are newly invented matters in this deen and every newly invented matter in this deen is a bid'ah and every bid'ah is a string and every string is in the hellfire <coughs> as for today's uh, lecture al-ikhtilaf what is it and what do we do when it happens today's lecture on this topic will be a tafsir of the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah an-nisa verse number 59 where Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala tells us after i say a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim Allah says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولَ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنْ تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكَ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse in Surah An-Nisa verse 59 tells us O oh, you who believe I command you to obey Allah and I command you to obey his messenger and those as they translate from authority among you those in authority among you and if you differ in anything then take it back to Allah and the messenger if you believe in Allah in the last day that is better as a final decision tonight's talk inshallah ta'ala al ikhtilaf what is it and what do we do when it happens will be the explanation of this ayah inshallah ta'ala allah tabarak wa ta'ala begins this ayah off <coughs> with the statement ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu o you who believe <coughs> and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's companion عبد الله ابن مسعود ابو عبد الرحمن رضي الله عنه he said in relationship to this ayah as many of the people of tafsir mention on him his statement اذا سمعت الله تعالى يقول يا ايها الذين امنوا فارعها سمعك فانه خير يؤمر به او شر ينهى عنه Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he says whenever you hear Allah say ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu or o you who believe then pay close attention to it and listen carefully because it is some good that you would be commanded to do or some evil that you will be prohibited from 
So this is the statement of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the companion of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who used to say about himself that he was present when 70 surahs or 70% of the Qur'an was revealed to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's one of the companions where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever wants to learn the Qur'an exactly the way it was revealed to me, then learn it from the recitation of this companion, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam also says about him, this great companion, I am pleased with my ummah, and this is the translation of the hadith, I am pleased with for my ummah that which Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and he called him Ibn 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 Ummi Abd, is pleased with for my ummah. So this is the companion Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and this is his statement when we hear, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, we should pay attention and listen carefully because there is some good that Allah will command us with or some bad or evil that we will be prohibited from. And one of the scholars in Medina, Abu Bakr al-Jazairi, <coughs> Hafadhullah, he recently wrote a book on all of the verses in the Qur'an that begins with, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. And he gave a basic explanation for those ayahs in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and alhamdulillah the brothers have given us that book as a gift to teach in the masjid so hopefully if we find the time inshallah we will cover that book or the explanation of the ayahs that begin with ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu O you who believe just as this ayah began then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us with good as he says I command you to obey Allah and I command you to obey the Messenger. And this theme of obeying Allah and obeying His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes in many verses in the Qur'an. So many verses and so many times that we have covered this topic that at times, you know, I feel like there's no need to remind us of those ayahs with obeying Allah and obeying His Messenger. So I'm going to be brief <clears throat> by showing you brothers a book that has been written and translated called O You Who Believe, Obey Allah and Obey the Messenger and in it, it has some ayat and some hadith from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the theme of obeying Allah and obeying His Messenger as the book begins with the first ayat from Surah Al-Ali Imran verse number 32 where Allah Tabarak Wa Ta'ala says قُلْ أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ Say, I command you to obey Allah and the Messenger, and if you turn away, meaning if you turn away from obedience to Allah and His Messenger, then indeed Allah does not love the kafirin. Indeed Allah does not like or love those people who disbelieve in Islam. So here Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is mentioning this theme of obeying Allah and obeying His Messenger and commanding us to obey Allah and to obey His Messenger. The second ayah is the ayah of discussion. And then the third ayah the brothers bring from Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter number 5, verse number 92. فَإِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ فَعَلَمُوا أَنَّمَا عَلَى رَسُولِنَا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ and I command you to obey Allah and to obey the Messenger and beware. Beware of not obeying Allah and not obeying His Messenger. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. And if you turn away, and if you turn away from this, if you turn away from obeying Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then know that the duty for the Messenger is only to proclaim the message clearly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Anfal, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَصْلِحُوا ذَاتَ بَيْنِكُمْ وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ I command you to fear Allah by doing that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you to do and staying away from that which He prohibits you from doing and this is taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
I command you to have taqwa of Allah and to reconciliate between yourselves or to make up from the disputes that you have among yourselves. And then I command you to obey Allah and His Messenger if you are believers. And then it goes on and on. And we have mentioned many verses <coughs> from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to obey Allah and to obey His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I just want to add two ayats to end it off. And that's the first ayat of Surah Al-Hujurat where Allah tabarak wa ta'ala tells us يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله واتقوا الله O oh, you who believe do not decide in an affair in your lives until you know the decision of Allah and His Messenger and then fear Allah Maybe we find that the ayat is normally translated O oh, you who believe do not be forward over Allah and His Messenger and the meaning of that as explained <coughs> by the scholars of Islam is do not decide an affair in your lives until you know the decision of Allah and His Messenger in that affair and then fear Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not just commanded us to obey Allah and to obey His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but has commanded us in a way that we should not decide anything until we know the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then we must obey Him and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah tabarak wa ta'ala tells us in ayat number 36 of Surah Al-Ahzab مَا كَانِ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنًا إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا مُبِينًا It is not proper or befitting for a believing man or a believing woman once Allah and His Messenger has decided in an affair that they have a choice in that affair and whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger has gone clearly astray So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala commands us those who believe in Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to obey Allah and His Messenger so much so that we should not decide anything in our lives till we know the decision of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And once we've known the decision of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then no one has a choice in the matter except to submit to the decision of Allah and the decision of His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and whoever decides on other than that has gone clearly astray. The brothers bring in the second half of this book, O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger, some hadith from the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the first hadith is the hadith of Imam al-Bukhari, on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, كُلُّ أُمَّتِي يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا مَنْ أَبَى قِيلَ وَمَنْ أَبَى قال من أطاعني دخل الجنة ومن عصاني فقد أبى. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said all of my ummah, all of the Muslims, those who have accepted Islam will enter into Jannah except for the person who refuses. It was said and who will refuse? He said whoever obeys me enters Jannah. And whoever disobeys me has refused. So here the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is showing us that the way to Jannah is by obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the way away from Jannah is by refusing to obey Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam. The next hadith is the hadith from Imam Muslim where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَا مِن نَبِيٍ مِن نَبِيٍ بَعَثَ اللَّهُ فِي أُمَّتِهِ قَبْلِي إِلَّا كَانَ لَهُ فِي أُمَّتِهِ حواريون وأصحاب يأخذون بسنته ويقتدون بأمره 
ثم انها تخلف من بعدهم خلوف يقولون ما لا يفعلون ويفعلون ما لا يؤمرون فمن جاهدهم بيده فهو مؤمن ومن جاهدهم بلسانه فهو مؤمن ومن جاهدهم بقلبه فهو مؤمن وليس وراء ذلك من الايمان حبا خردلا This hadith in Sahih Muslim where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there is not a prophet that Allah has sent to his ummah before me except that he had companions and followers that would take hold or practice his sunnah the sunnah of that prophet and they would follow his commandments then there came a people after them they would say they would say that which they would not do and they would do that which they were not commanded to do so whoever finds them <coughs> so whoever makes jihad against them then he is a believer and whoever makes jihad against him with his tongue then he is a believer excuse me the first part and whoever makes jihad against him with his hands he is a believer and whoever makes jihad against him with his tongue then he is a believer and whoever makes jihad against him with his heart then he is a believer and there is not any iman or the like of iman of a small mustard seed after that so here the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is showing us that there has not been a prophet except that they had companions and followers that practiced their sunnah and followed that which they were commanded and this is the point to show us that we have to follow the commandments of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to practice his sunnah and then <coughs> they mention many other uh, hadith on the issue of obeying allah and obeying his messenger but i'm going to leave the book for whoever wants to read it and to take a look at a few statements of the of <coughs> the people who came after the messenger of allah alayhi salatu wassalam who believed in them and their statements in regards to obeying allah and to and to regards of obeying his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam from a book called miftah al janna fi al ihtijaj bi al sunnah and this is by imam al suyuti who died 911 hijra this whole book he's written with the proof that we have to follow the sunnah <clears throat> Imam Al-Suyuti he mentions from among the statements <clears throat> the statement of Sa'id ibn Jubair one of the tabi'in who was considered the most knowledgeable person of the book of Allah during his time rahimahullah he said or a person said to him annahu hadatha yawman بحديث عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال له رجل في كتاب الله ما يخالف هذا فقال لا اراني احدثك عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وتعرض فيه بكتاب الله كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اعلم بكتاب الله منك and the rest of insha Allah I'll just try to bring the translation for the sake of time but there was a person who came to Sa'id ibn Jubair rahimahullah and said one day that I see that you have mentioned or narrated a hadith from the hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the man said that that narration is in contradiction to the book of Allah so Sa'id ibn Jubair rahimahullah he said I do not see myself narrating a hadith on the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that would contradict the book of Allah don't you know that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was more knowledgeable of the book of Allah than you here Sa'id ibn Jubair <coughs> rahimahullah is showing us that at times a person may think from his lack of understanding of the book of Allah that a particular hadith is in contradiction to the Quran so he would reject that hadith of the messenger of Allah 
وسلم, and therefore be disobedient to the commandment of Allah and I command you to obey the messenger but the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was more knowledgeable of the book of Allah than anyone else and if he narrated a hadith and that hadith is authentically reported on him then there is no contradiction between the hadith of the messenger of Allah and the ayat in the book of Allah and the Quran as Allah has commanded us to obey Allah and to obey his messenger. Among the statements is the statement of Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said <coughs> uh, uh, holding ourselves firmly to the sunnah is better than working hard in something that is opposed to the sunnah. And then he has the statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said to look at a man from the people of the Sunnah who's calling to the Sunnah <coughs> and prohibiting from the bid'ah, from the practice of bid'ah, is worship. To look at a person from the people of the Sunnah, from Ahlu Sunnah, who's calling to the Sunnah and prohibiting the people from bid'ah is worship. And this is the statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu showing us the importance of the sunnah and the people of the sunnah who practice it and call others to the sunnah there's also the statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas who also said I swear by Allah that I don't think that <coughs> there is anyone on the face of the earth who loves to destroy the shaitan more than I do it was said why do you say that he said, <clears throat> because I would hear about a particular bid'ah, either in the west or in the east, and then a person would bring, that inf bring back to me the information of that bid'ah, and then when it came to me, I would destroy that bid'ah with sunnah, <clears throat> so that <clears throat> bid'ah would go back to where it came from. So here Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu is showing us <coughs> that holding fast to the sunnah is one of the ways to destroy the shaitan who has invented the bid'ah to spread among the Muslims. Also is the statement <coughs> of Yunus ibn Ubaid who said there is nothing more stranger than the sunnah and nothing more stranger than that except someone who doesn't know it. There's nothing more stranger than the sunnah and nothing more stranger than that except the person who didn't know it. Also, there's the statement of Ayyub al-Sakhtiyani who said, <clears throat> I have been for informed of the death of a person from Ahlu Sunnah or from the people of the sunnah and it is as if I lost one of the limbs of my body part or one of the organs of my body. Here Ayyub, rahimahullah, is showing us how strongly his love is for the people of Sunnah and how he felt if somebody of the Sunnah died, that he would feel as if he lost a part of his body. There's also his statement, uh, Ayyub, rahimahullah, that indeed <clears throat> from among the new people who have embraced Islam, or the people who do not know the Arabic language <clears throat> is to have the success of Allah to be in the company of an alim of the Sunnah or someone who is knowledgeable of the Sunnah. So here <clears throat> Ayyub al-Sakhtiyani rahimahullah maybe is referring particularly to our <clears throat> uh, case here in America that those people who have embraced Islam or those people who do not know the Arabic language that from their success that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with is to be among a person who is knowledgeable of the sunnah and he also says that the first blessing or favor that Allah can show on a young person when he begins to worship Allah wa ta'ala is to give him a brother 
who would be his companion to help him practice the sunnah. And then there are many statements <coughs> among the people of knowledge, like this last statement that I'll mention from Hamad ibn Zaid, or excuse me, from Ayyub al Sakhtiani, who also said that the people who love to see the people or wish to see that the people from Ahlul Sunnah or the people who practice the Sunnah to die is, is as if they want to put out the light of Allah with their mouths. So these are some statements and there are a lot of statements from the people of the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the people who came after them showing us the importance of the Sunnah or the importance of being, obeying the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala after he says, O you who believe, I command you to obey Allah and I command you to obey his messenger and those from authority among you. Those in authority among you is referring to the leaders of the Muslims and the people of knowledge and fiqh and deen or the scholars of Islam. The leaders of the Muslims in the administrative capacity and the leaders among the Muslims from among the people of knowledge or the scholars. The scholar Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, who died 774 Hijra, in his tafsir, he explained that this ayah the apparent meaning and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best is that it is in relationship or that what is meant by ulul amri is those leaders in the administrative capacity and those leaders from among the scholars of the Muslims. So here <coughs> Ibn Kathir rahimahullah <coughs> is showing us that those in authority from among the believers as is narrated from many of the tabi'een and the people who came after them <coughs> all the way through the generations that what is meant by those in authority among you are the administrative leaders and the knowledgeable leaders from among the Muslims. Those are the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to obey them. And we should know that there is no conflict <coughs> between obeying the administrative leaders and obeying the knowledgeable people in Islam. And that we should understand this point as this is one of the major, <coughs> unfortunately, points of differences here in America where the people of leadership are differing with the people of knowledge. And the people of knowledge are differing with the people of leadership. It's as if each group of them are trying to show that I am the one that is in charge. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding all of the believers to obey both groups of people. The administrative leaders from among the believers and also the people of knowledge. Both of them should be obeyed and there is no contradiction or com <coughs> conflict between obeying the leaders and obeying the knowledgeable people. And insha'Allah ta'ala, we hope that soon there will be a lecture or a series of lectures titled, We Have Not Come, <coughs> we have not come to Take Your Leadership. Showing that the people of knowledge have not come to take the leadership position of those who are in leadership from among the Muslims. Rather the leaders among the Muslims and the knowledgeable people among the Muslims have been commanded to work together and they have the people have been commanded to follow them. In obedience to these leaders both administratively and from the people of knowledge is obedience to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and therefore obedience to Allah as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us in the authentic hadith collected by Imam al-Bukhari, a Muslim. Man ata'ani faqad ata'a Allah, wa man asani faqad asa Allah. 
ومن أطاع أميري فقد أطاعني ومن عصى أميري فقد عصاني. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Whoever obeys Allah, whoever obeys me, excuse me, whoever obeys me has indeed obeyed Allah. And whoever disobeys me indeed has disobeyed Allah. And whoever obeys my Amir, my leader, has obeyed me, and whoever disobeys my leader has disobeyed me. So here the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is showing us that our obedience that our obedience to our leaders, both the administrative leaders and the leaders from the people of knowledge, that obeying them is obeying the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that obeying the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is obeying Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And this is the meaning of the first part of the ayah. O oh, you who believe, I command you to obey Allah and I command you to obey the Messenger and those leaders administratively and from the people of knowledge from among the believers. This obedience, however, to the leaders is conditional. Meaning that those leaders are only obeyed so long as they obey Allah and they obey the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah hints to it by saying, I command you to obey Allah and I command you to obey the Messenger and those leaders from among you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't repeat the word, I command you to obey for the third time, referring to the leaders, hinting or showing us that obedience to the leaders is conditional upon obedience to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As, <clears throat> as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in an authentic hadith collected by Imam Ahmed, لا طاعة في معصية الله That there is no obedience and disobedience to Allah. That there is no obedience uh, with disobedience to Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ is showing us that our leaders are only obeyed so long as they obey Allah and obey His Messenger. So long as they are calling us to obey Allah and they are calling us to obey His Messenger ﷺ, then we are to obey them. But if they are calling us to disobedience to Allah and disobedience to His Messenger ﷺ, then there is no obedience to creation and disobedience to the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shows us that this obedience to them is in the things that we like and the things <coughs> that we dislike. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in this hadith collected by Imam al-Bukhari, a Muslim, مَنْ رَآ مِنْ أَمِيرِهِ شَيْئًا فَكَرِيهَهُ فَلْيَصْبِرُ فإنه ليس أحد يفارق الجماعة شبرا فيموت إلا مات ميتة جاهلية. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says whoever sees something in his leader that he dislikes, then I command him to be patient, because indeed there is no one who will leave the جماعة from the degree of a shibr or this amount. A hand span, except that he will die like the dying of the people of Jahiliyyah. So the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is showing us that we should obey our leaders from among the knowledgeable people and the administrative leaders, whether we like it or not, so long as they are not calling us to disobey Allah or to disobey his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if Allah tabarak wa ta'ala wills in the future, inshallah, we will go into depth about our position as far as obeying the leaders of the Muslims. <clears throat> o oh, you who believe, I command you to obey Allah, and I command you to obey the Messenger and those leaders administratively and the knowledgeable ones from among the Muslims. But if you differ in anything, then take it back to Allah and the Messenger, if you believe in Allah in the last day. Here we come to the topic of our discussion, and that is al-ikhtilaf, and what is it? Al-ikhtilaf is the Arabic word 
that means in English difference of opinion. Al ikhtilaf is the Arabic word and we should get uh, familiar with the terminology that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in his book and the language of the Quran, Arabic, the language of our messenger and prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Arabic and al ikhtilaf it means difference of opinion. And when it happens, we are to do that which Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is commanding us in this verse right here. And if you differ in anything, then take it back to Allah and take it back to the Messenger. Take it back to Allah, meaning the book of Allah, the Quran. Take it back to the Messenger, drawing him directly while he was living, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, and after his death, to his sunnah, that which has been authentically reported on him, alayhi salatu wa salam. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in many verses in the Qur'an shows us that when we differ, then we should take it back to Allah and His Messenger. As the verdict is with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala on the issues that we differ in, as Allah tabarak wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Shura, verse number 10, وَمَا اخْتَلَفْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَحُكْمُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ and whatever you differ in, then the verdict is with Allah. Whatever you differ in, then the verdict is with Allah. We know that we differ all the time, almost daily. And we have to begin to know or to practice that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us with, that when we differ, to start taking it back immediately to Allah and to His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not anyone besides that. As we hear many times, when the difference of opinion begins, well, I heard so-and-so say. Well, I heard so-and-so say. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has commanded us to leave that off. And to say, Allah said, His Messenger said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we differ, and not so-and-so said, and so-and-so said. When we differ from the very beginning that the difference of opinion begins, we should take it immediately back to the book of Allah and the sunnah of His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Allah commands us in more than one ayat as he says in this ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah كَانَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ وَأَنزَلَ مَعْهُمُ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ فِي مَخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ وَمَا اخْتَلَفَ فِيهِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ بَغْيًا بَيْنَهُمْ فَهَدَى اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَا اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الْحَقِّ بِإِذْنِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ إِلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the people were one ummah meaning on one, on one opinion or on one position, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submission to Him. And then Allah sent messen prophets as givers of glad tidings and as warners. And He revealed to them revelation in the form of books with the truth so that they may judge between the people and those issues that they differed in. Here Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is telling us that he sent all of the prophets with revelation, with books from him subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that the prophets could judge between the people with the book of Allah and those affairs that they differed in. So here Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is showing us that the verdict is with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala if we differ. And then Allah went on to say, and they did not differ, and they did not differ, <coughs> or excuse me, what they differed in, and they did not differ in anything except those people who had been given clear proofs. They did not differ except after they had been given clear proofs because of hatred among themselves. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us one of the reasons that we differ is that we have hatred or enmity between ourselves or among ourselves so we differ with one another because of our hatred of that person or our dislike because of that person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and Allah guides those who believe in the issues that they differ in to the truth by His permission and Allah guides whoever He pleases 
to the straight path. So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is showing us that He is the one that guides those who believe. Those who are free from enmity and hatred and dislike in their heart for the believers, Allah guides them to the truth and the issues that the people differ in, and Allah will guide whoever He pleases to the straight path. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala tells us in another verse, in Surah Al-Nahl, verse number 64, وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا لِتُبَيِّنَ إِلَّا لِتُبَيِّنَ لَهُمُ الَّذِ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً لِقَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ And we have not revealed to you the book except to explain to them and the affairs that they differ in. And as a guidance and a mercy for those who believe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us in these verses and in other verses that the decision is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the issues that we differ in if you believe in Allah in the last day. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in a few verses later in Surah Al Nisa, verse number 65, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا I swear by your Lord. And here Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is swearing by himself. I swear by your Lord that none of them will believe until they make you, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the judge and the affairs that they dispute in, and then they don't find any difficulty in your decision, but they submit willingly. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us that the people who really believe are the people who make the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the judge in the affairs that they differ in. This is al-ikhilaf or difference of an opinion. And this is what we have been commanded to do by Allah tabarak wa ta'ala when we differ. And that is to take it back to Allah, to the book of Allah. And back to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly during his life. And now after his death, alayhi salatu wa salam, to that which has been authentically reported on him. <clears throat> so when we differ, and this was <clears throat> the basis of this talk tonight, that whenever we differ in any matter concerning our deen, that once the difference has been uh, detected, once we realize that we have differed, Akhi, I think it's this way, the brother says, no, it's that way, from the time we know that the difference began, the next statement off of any one of their mouths should be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in his book, so and so. Or the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his sunnah has said so and so. And not ever to come off our tongues after we have realized that we have differed so and so has said such and such. So and so has said such and such after Allah tabarak wa ta'ala had commanded us if you differ in anything then I command you to take it back to Allah and to the Messenger. So this is what we're to do whenever we find ourselves in a difference of opinion and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from differing. This is what we do when we differ, but we shouldn't be so easy to come into a difference of opinion after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from differing, as he says in Surah Ali Imran, verse 105, and do not be like those people who have divided themselves up into groups and have differed after clear proofs have come to them, clear explanations have come to them, and those, those who differ after clear evidence has come to them, for them is a painful chastisement. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from being among those people who have differed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also shows us, after He has prohibited us from differing, that if we fall into this differing, after we have been prohibited, then it will make us unsuccessful. Failures, and it will take away our strength, 
As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anfal, verse number 46, وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْحَبَ رِيحُكُمْ وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I command you to obey Allah, and I command you to obey, I command you to obey Allah and His Messenger, and do not differ. And I prohibit you from differing. Otherwise, you will be failures or unsuccessful, and your strength will leave you, and I command you to be patient. Indeed, Allah is with the patient. Many times, we hear ourselves, when we talk about Islam in America or Islam in the world today, we talk about the failure among ourselves as Muslims and the state of humiliation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us in from leaving our deen and differing in matters of our deen. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to obey Him, Azza wa Jal, and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and not to differ as it will make us failures and it will take away our strength. So we should know that we should do our best not to differ among ourselves because this differing would make us failures. But that we should obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that we would stay away from differing and not fall into it so that we would be among the unsuccessful, the un- back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited us from differing and showed us that one of the ways to failure is by differing. And one of the ways of losing our strength, that might that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to Islam and the Messenger and the believers is to fall into differing. But that we should be patient with ob- in obeying Allah and obeying His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Allah is with the patient. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that as human beings we will fall into differing as He says in Surah Al-Hud verses 118 and 119 as He says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَجَعَلَ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكَ To the end of that ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, If He had willed, He would have made humanity one nation. Or He would have made humanity on one position. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to, in specific, on one position, the position of iman or belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in submission to Him. However, Allah says, they will never cease to be differing except those who your Lord shows His mercy on. They will never cease to be differing, meaning some will be kafirs and some will be believers. Some will be believers and some will be kafirs or disbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically in this verse is referring to the difference of iman and kufr. But we know that the ayat aren't <coughs> solely for the specific reason that it was revealed, but the general meaning that comes up from the ayat are to be applied as the scholars of Islam have established and as one of the principles of understanding the book of Allah or the tafsir of the Qur'an. So you will never cease to be differing except those who your Lord shows His mercy on. So at times there's no way to run away from the difference of, the, uh, difference of an opinion because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already decreed that we would be weak enough to fall into differing. And if we fall into differing, then there's nothing better to do than that which Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah has said that he did when he would ever fall into difference of opinion with the scholars who came before him or the scholars that came, that were there among his time. He said that, and I'm paraphrasing his statement, that whenever I found myself differing with anyone, then I would rub my face in the dirt, showing that he would make prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
And then he said, I would say, Allahumma Rabb Jibreel wa Mikail wa Israfil, <coughs> Fatir al-Samawati wal-Ard, Alim al-Ghayb wa Shahada, Anta tahkum bayna ibadika fi ma kanu fihi yakhtalifun, Ihdini lima khtulifa fihi min al-Haqq bi-Idnik, إِنَّكَ تَهْدِي مَنْ تَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ And that statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah is a hadith from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam collected by Imam Muslim and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his night salat after his takbir he would make this statement and that is the statement O Allah the Lord of Jibreel the Lord of Mikael and the Lord of Israfil, the originator of the heavens and the earth, the knower of the unseen and the seen, you are the one who judges between your servants in the affairs that they have differed in. I ask you to guide me to the truth by your permission in the affairs that are differed in, Indeed, you guide whoever you please to the straight path. So this is from the dua of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and the dua of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, that as human beings, if we are by the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forced into differing, then we should turn to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala with this dua Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the truth and the issues that people differ in. Because Allah can guide whoever He pleases to the truth and the issues that people differ in. So this is if we happen to fall into difference of opinion after trying to stay away from differing. And if we did to take it back to Allah and His Messenger. But if there was no escape but we fell into differing, then we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us in those affairs that we differ in. This is, in general, when we differ in any issue in this deen. As we were stating from this ayah, when we differ in anything, we should take it back to Allah, rather we must take it back to Allah and back to His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, we're going to find that even at times, and, it are, and these, inshallah, are the fewer times that we will differ, after we have taken it back to Allah and His Messenger, we might still differ. Before we have taken it back to Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first thing we do when we differ is to take it back to Allah and to His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But at times after we have taken it back to Allah and His Messenger, and our differencing, our differences of this type, the type that after we have taken it back to Allah and His Messenger, inshallah these differences will be of fewer in number as opposed to the differences before we have taken it back to Allah and His Messenger. But if we have differed, after we have taken it back to Allah and His Messenger, then the Prophet wasallam says, an authentic hadith collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim اقرأ القرآن ما اتلفت عليه قلوبكم وإذا اختلفتم فقوموا Read the Quran so long as your hearts agree that each verse has a particular meaning but if you differ then I command you to disperse Here the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is commanding us to read the Quran to contemplate the Quran to understand and to practice the Qur'an in our lives. But if we differ after reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which in it commands us to uh, take that which we get from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Allah says, مَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا That whatever the Messenger gives you, take it, and whatever he prohibits you, leave it. That after we have read the Qur'an, in the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we still find ourselves differing, the Prophet said, and if you differ, then disperse. Meaning once we have taken it back to Allah, and once we have taken it back to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then one of us says, no Allah is saying it like this. No the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that. 
Then the other brother is saying, no, it's not like that from those two ayahs, but it's like this from this ayah, or it's like that from that hadith. That both sides, both parties have taken it back to Allah and taken it back to their messenger, to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they still find themselves differing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us to disperse, to leave the argument alone, to leave the debate alone, not to go into it any further. Case closed. Once both sides have taken it back to Allah and His Messenger, and there's still a difference, there's no more discussion on that issue. There's no more discussion in that issue. The case is closed. And at times, we find ourselves with this type of differing, we have to learn to let it go. We have to learn to let it go so that we don't differ, so that we will be failures and unsuccessful. And our strength will leave us because we are trying to differ after we have taken it back to Allah and His Messenger. Once we have taken it back to Allah and His Messenger, and there's still a difference, then to let it go and to be happy that inshallah both sides will be on the truth because both sides are on the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam as far as these issues to add a further statement <coughs> as far as these issues where we differ after we have taken it back to Allah and back to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that these issues are the issues of ijtihad inshallah these are the issues of ijtihad the issues where <coughs> obviously it's not so cut and dry or defined from the book of Allah or the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so the people have differed in these issues of ijtihad there is some advice for us and some knowledge for us from the statement of Imam Al-Qasimi Rahimahullah who is quoting from the scholar <coughs> Ibn Al-Qayyim Al-Jawziya Rahimahullah who said and I'm quoting from Tafsir Al-Qasimi the statement of Ibn Al-Qayyim Al-Jawziya وَمَا لَمْ يَتَبَيَّنْ لَهُمْ كَانَ عِنْدَهُمْ مِنْ مَسَائِلَ من مسائل الاجتهاد التي غايتها أن تكون سائغة الاتباع لا واجبة الاتباع من غير أن يلزموا بها أحدا ولا يقولوا إنها الحق دون ما خالفها هذه طريقة أهل العلم سلفا عن خلف Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziya rahimahullah and this is from <coughs> the the knowledge of Imam al-Qasimi rahimahullah in his tafsir when quoting this ayah he brings the statement of Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziya and if something has not been made clear for them then it is from among the issues of ijtihad the most that these issues of ijtihad could be is permissible to follow. The most that we would get from these issues of ijtihad is that it is permissible for someone to follow. Not that it's compulsory to follow. And that no one should be forced to, no one should force anyone else to follow it saying that this is the truth and everything else that opposes it is the truth. This is the way of the scholars past and present, generation after generation. And this is a point that we see that many of the people <coughs> unfortunately don't understand. If the issue is an issue of ijtihad, meaning that both parties have verses or hadith from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to back up their argument. Both sides have evidences from the Quran and from that which has been authentically reported on the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These issues become issues where the verdicts in them are like advice. 
it is permissible to take it. No one could say that it is the truth and everything else is other than the truth. No one could force anyone else to do or not to do in these particular issues. Issues of ijtihad, issues where both sides are taking them back to Allah and His Messenger, but the issue isn't particularly clear. And there are examples, <coughs> and I don't want to bring any differences up so that we don't differ, so that we'll be unsuccessful until the issue comes up, and then we will go back to this, that on these issues that the most can be said is that it is permissible to follow, not compulsory to follow. And no one can make anyone follow this. And he can't say that it is the truth. And that everything else is not the truth. <clears throat> but I would say in general. That on the issues that the ulama say are qiyas. The issues where the ulama say that they are using qiyas to make their decision. Everyone, with no difference of an opinion, among the scholars consider the issues where Qiyas is used as issues of Ijtihad. They consider the issues of Qiyas to be the issues of Ijtihad. And those issues of Ijtihad are not to be considered the truth and everything else opposed to that is falsehood. Rather, the most we can say in these issues of ijtihad is that whoever likes to follow it, then let him follow it. No one is saying that it is compulsory to follow. <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, O oh, you who believe, I command you to obey Allah and I command you to obey the Messenger. And those leaders, both administratively and from the people of knowledge from among you, among the Muslims, but if you differ, then take it back to Allah, to His book, the Qur'an, and back to His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or His authentic Sunnah. If you believe in Allah and the last day, that is better as a final decision. If you believe in Allah and the last day. <coughs> The ulama of tafsir, they are explaining that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentions, after stating particular points in the Qur'an, if you believe in Allah in the last day, showing that either you take what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you, or you don't believe in Allah in the last day. Either, when you either, <clears throat> when you differ, you either take it back to Allah or His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or you don't believe in Allah in the last day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His Qur'an, He shows us in quite a few verses, if you are believers, if you believe in Allah in the last day, if you believe, showing us the severity of a particular issue, and that if you are believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you would do this especially. Of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, to obey him everything that he commands us. But we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Well, I command you to, <coughs> to fear me as much as you are able to. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِأَمْرٍ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ If I command you with any command, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if I command you with any command, then do it as much as you are able to. This is in general from the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we must do them as much as we're able to. But when Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, if you believe in Allah in the last day, it's showing that it's even more important not to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those issues where Allah says, if you believe in Allah in the last day. It's as if Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is testing you. You say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. Okay, if you believe, then do this. If you believe, then do this. 
And if you don't do this, then you're showing me that you don't believe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing the believers that when they differ to take it back to Allah in the, in the last, to take it back to Allah and His Messenger by saying, if you believe in Allah in the last day, if you believe in Allah in the last day, that is better as a final decision. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ending this verse off by showing it is better as a final decision to obey Allah and to obey His Messenger and those who are in authority from among the Muslims, those administrative leaders or leaders in whatever capacity they're leading and the knowledgeable people from among the Muslims and that if you differ, take it back to Allah, to His book, the Qur'an and back to His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to His authentic Sunnah after His death if you believe in Allah in the last day doing that is better as a final decision so this was tonight's talk, al ikhtilaf what is it? It's difference of opinion. And what do we do when it happens? We take it back to Allah, to His book, and back to His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or His Sunnah after His death, alayhi salatu wa salam. If there was any good, then it's from Allah. And if there was anything wrong, then it's from me. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me for my shortcomings. We ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to make us among those people who listen to what is said and follow that which is best of it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in knowledge, beneficial knowledge, and to allow us to practice that beneficial knowledge. Wa subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. If there was something that wasn't clear in tonight's talk, or something that needed further explanation, then inshallah ta'ala, if we have the answer for those questions, we could uh, take them now. And if everything is clear, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the success of practicing his deen. Walhamdulillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.